I have a supernatural voice. I speak without the use of vocal cords. This is not a known alternative speech production process. My voice is different to any voice known to you. My name is Niels Cornelissen and this is my story. The voice that you now hear is a voice without the use of vocal cords. I lost the use of my vocal cords and the ability to speak after an operation. The period after the operation was devastating without my only way of communication, my ability to speak. In a short time, I taught myself an alternative speech. I was communicating by creating sucking sounds. Competing in a natural world, even with a voice, is sometimes challenging. I had the privilege one day when some of my family members visited me at home. A family gathering happened very seldom during that period in my life because of my adverse condition. I was really hungry to partake in that conversation. My participation in the conversation was limited, mostly by using facial expressions. At a certain moment, one of my beloved family member stopped the conversation, turned to me and asked, Niels, if you had a voice, what would you have said? His voice felt like a dagger that pierced my heart. A moment engraved into me, I will never forget and will stay with me for the rest of my life. A moment I was brought back to reality that shocked my most inner being. I was confronted and challenged to realize that I was disabled and could not speak. That was a different wake-up call. Now I realize that was a very necessary wake-up call. Today, I am very grateful to him and know that was one of my early turning points of creating alternative speech. Isn't it funny that we take so many things for granted? But when we have lost it, we learn to appreciate that what we do have so much more. Not only do we value that what we have lost, but are willing to sacrifice a lot to get it back. When in that position, you realize all the money in the world can't buy back what you have lost. For many years, you put your trust into possessions and money to comfort you. When opposition strikes and you have to say goodbye to some of your body parts and become severely ill, the trust in money depreciates day by day. When you receive more news that there is no cure for you. After I received this voice, the voice that you are witnessing right now, I realize 
that all the techniques that I practiced for many years and well trained and mastered all form part of my new sound production process. How did that happen? You are about to find out. For you to understand and for you to comprehend my supernatural voice, you need to have some insight about my techniques that I developed. The very first technique I want to share with you is a breathing technique which I call my doggy breathing technique. This part of my testimony form parts of my greater testimony of how it is possible for me to speak without the use of vocal cords. Our Lord Jesus Christ sometimes uses whatever you have available to perform the miracle. He does not always add to what you already have, but sometimes add to what you don't have. This is my doggy breathing technique. One day, when watching my dog breathing after an good exercise, ignited an idea inside of me to investigate the possibility to incorporate a similar action to enhance the effectiveness of my breathing. This technique became a vital key element in my alternative speech production process. At that time, I did not have a clue that it would even be possible. It never even crossed my mind that it would become a survival necessity. This is my breathing technique I developed under my personal conditions after suffering from severe heartburn, acid regurgitation and acid reflux. After a double Nissan fund application procedure, a Nissan fund application procedure is a procedure to create a stomach valve to treat gastroesophageal reflux disease, which is also called GERD, and also to treat an hertial hernia. This has failed and I continued suffered from heartburn from the middle 90s. On 23rd May 2012, I underwent a total suffragectomy operation or gastric pull-up. An esophagectomy is the removal of the esophagus. Only the bottom part of my stomach was used to form a tube or sausage and was pulled up into my chest cavity and stapled 5 millimeters below the height of my larynx. This process of acid regurgitation became beyond comprehension after the esophagectomy procedure. Little did I know about 25, 26 years ago when I mastered this technique, it would become a vital procedure in my later sound production process. I lost my ability to speak after the esophagectomy operation and was told by a professor that I will never be able to speak again. He was medically correct. I have a lot of respect for him. He is a brilliant cardiothoracic surgeon. I am forever 
thankful to him. I believe that all doctors and everybody involved in healthcare are part of Jesus' ultimate healing ministry. That is so amazing. I have no approved medical background or any medical qualifications. This breathing technique I developed based on my personal experience and knowledge. This is a basic description on how I think, feel and experience when carrying out this technique. The doggy breathing technique is effective for temporary relief from the results of heartburn, acid regurgitation and acid reflux. Heartburn is the burning sensation felt behind the breastbone, along the esophagus and the laryngopharynx. This is my illustration of the human anatomy. This is my masterpiece. And please, I need you to use your imagination. That will help me tremendous. This is the nose and the lips. The red upper part is the nasal passages. Flow into the nasal pharynx, the oropharynx, laryngopharynx, esophagus and the stomach. This over here is the mouth and the blue portion over here is the heart palate or roof of the mouth and that flows and extends into the soft palate which is the uvula. This area over here is the tongue and this is the epiglottis that closes the glottis when swallowing. The upper part of the larynx houses the two vocal folds or vocal cords and then flow into the trachea and into the lungs. This technique also brings relief to the burning in the uvula, the throat, uh, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx and laryngopharynx and epiglottis. It, it also brings sensational relief to the upper parts of the stomach. Under normal dietary and liquid consumption, the effect of high intake of acid foods and acid liquids enhances this condition. Gastroesophageal reflux occurs when the stomach content is forced back up into the esophagus. This happens when the valve between the stomach and the esophagus, called the lower esophageal splinter, does not close effectively or with the presence of a hertile hernia. Not all people with a hertile hernia will have reflux. A hertile hernia is the condition when the upper part of the stomach pushes through the muscles, separating your abdomen and your chest diaphragm. The doggy breathing technique is effective for temporary relief when sucking air into the stomach. I do not recommend this breathing technique to people whose stomach was surgically removed or any other condition that will put them at risk of injury. 
sucking air into the intestines can cause discomfort to the digestive system. This breathing exercise can also assist in the settling of the food level in the stomach and assist with blood circulation. This is a technique that I do. It works very effectively for me and even from the very first time I performed this technique. I don't recommend you do this. I share this technique with you because in my greater testimony you will have a greater understanding from where this is coming from. Now when carrying out this procedure the cool air brings relief to the burning uvula, the pharynx, the nasopharynx, oropharynx, laryngopharynx, esophagus, epiglottis and the upper part of the stomach. The alkalinity in the air neutralizes some of the acid buildup in those areas. Please note, this technique is not for persons with a healthy stomach and a healthy lower esophageal splinter. You might not need this. Under the normal swallowing process, when excess air is trapped into the stomach is because of an interruption during swallowing. Something went wrong with the swallowing process. Air in the stomach can cause discomfort. This procedure is not a normal breathing procedure. Normal breathing is exercised when air is inhaled into the lungs by moving the chest away at about 90 degrees from the spine. That way. This breathing technique is most effective when breathing through both the nose and the mouth to allow as much air as possible to enter the body. I have done this technique for many years and many thousands of times. This was the basic technique that I based the more advanced technique. It is always advisable when doing any exercise to stand up straight or sit up straight in a comfortable position. Do not lean or rest against anything to ensure most effectiveness and to prevent easy movement when practicing. Inhale air into the lungs by moving the chest, shoulders and arms up vertically and parallel to the spine. Exhale air by moving chest, shoulders and arms down vertically and parallel to the spine. This action is done together with normal breathing. Now I continue this technique by sucking air into my stomach. Now how do I do this? Inhale air into the lungs and sucking air into the stomach at the same time. Air will flow down into both my windpipe into my lungs and into the feeding tube down the esophagus into the stomach at the same time. Exhale air by using stomach muscles to force air out the stomach and exhale normally. Please note, 
the esophagus, a feeding tube, is a flat muscular tube and will stay flat, closed, when normal breathing. The esophagus will only dilate when swallowing, when eating and drinking. I call this process motor coordinated propulsion or peristaltic propulsion. There are two splinters or superconstrictors present in the esophagus. The upper esophageal splinter preventing airflow to enter the stomach when breathing and the lower esophageal splinter or stomach valve to prevent gastro content into the esophagus. In order to execute this technique I have to voluntarily relax the upper esophageal splinter to be able to allow air flow past the esophagus. The esophageal coordinating process is part of the autonomic nerve system. I have to voluntarily perform parts of an autonomic system to obtain the required results. I will explain this process much deeper in future episodes as part of my greater testimony. I continue with this breathing technique as quickly and as long as I can. I will feel the cool air entering all the way down into my stomach. Now the techniques becomes a little more complicated. I now hold my breath in for as long as I can after a few breaths. Exhale all the air from both the lungs and force the air from the stomach. Relax and breathe normally. Repeat this breathing technique until experiencing relief from burning or heartburn. Important is to slow down or stop this breathing technique when feel lightheaded. Breathe normally until you feel normal again. I keep repeating this breathing technique till there is no more burning. Please note, when practice this technique, it is essential not to be aggressive. This was very good advice for myself to prevent any injury and unnecessary discomfort in my earlier practicing. You know when you have success, when you feel the cool air sensation flowing down into your stomach. This technique also allows the forced air to push down as it build up in the esophagus. By doing this action, I counter force the raised acid and forced it back down the esophagus. This technique I find extremely effective and with the same effectiveness as taking a tablet which contains antacid to neutralize acid stomach acid. I never did this technique in the company of other people scared that they might think that I was crazy. I would do the same technique without the moving of my body up or down, the normal way of breathing. A little less effective, I believe, 
but still effective enough. I also admit that I've done this technique without the additional body assistance many thousands of times before I added the additional body movement. Why is additional body action more effective? When breathing air into your stomach, you have to dilate the upper esophageal splinter over there, which is also called a superconstrictor. This prevents the air from entering your stomach when normal breathing. With my doggy breathing technique, the body movement is focused to be up and down. With the body up and down movements, allows the esophagus to dilate much easier. The effect of relief from heartburn can be from the very first breath. I have performed these different techniques, options, so many times before. All work with immediate effect. I've consumed many tablets and lots of acid neutralizing acids in my lifetime before I found this technique. Now, how does this technique have anything to do with my later sound production process? Well, everything, and you are about to find out. I thank you for taking the time to listen to this part of my testimony. I trust that you are a little more enlightened and that you will also follow the next part of my testimony that is coming soon. I want to leave you with this promise. The Bible tells us in Matthew 5 verse 45. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. In this portion of scripture, Jesus gave us an amazing promise. Jesus set the example that he gives blessing to the righteous and the unrighteous. Many Christians are struggling with this concept of reality. If you are struggling, I want to help you today. Well, if you have difficulty in God's amazing grace, let me take you back to verse 43, in which Jesus gave the key to this statement. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Well, during those days, that was the accepted principle of the culture of that day. And Jesus was to change that status quo upside down. He gave me and you a new command in how to treat even our enemies. And in verse 43, Jesus continued speaking. But I say to you, love your enemies. Now we want to kill our enemies. Continued, bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Now comes the promise and the invitation to this declaration that you may be sons of your father in heaven this was given to his followers in that gathering this is still applicable to me and you today i continue for he that's the father in heaven makes his son rise on the 
evil and on the good and saints reign on the just and the unjust therefore God bless you all I thank you that you endured this long introduction episode I promise that the next episode may be shorter till we meet again and goodbye